Hi, I'm Pritika Rao and today I'm with Dr. Vixen Pereira who is MD in Dermatology and today we're going to specifically speak about moles and freckles because the internet is full of home remedies like applying garlic peels you know on your nose overnight and you know applying toothpaste and limestone and whatnot which can actually burn and damage your skin. So what is the right and correct way of treating flat moles and raised moles and if it's actually treatable and permanently removable let's find out stay tuned so dr rickson a uh, very very common uh, problem today i would say and I see a lot of these cases and a lot of uh, girls have also written to me. They really want to know uh, if flat moles and raised moles both can be treated and permanently removed. So uh, flat moles are those dark spots that appear on the skin and uh, they do not change with uh, weather or light exposure. They are fixed dark spots mm -hmm. and uh, you have uh, raised moles which Sometimes the flat moles can evolve into raised moles or a raised mole can uh, you know, grow right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So there's always a part of the mole which grows deeper in the skin, although it appears flat or mm -hmm. raised, mm -hmm. but there's a part of the mole that's deeper in the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they can be treated. They are completely harmless. Uh, they are called as uh, junctional nevi or flat uh, moles mm -hmm. and uh, compound or dermal nevi which are raised moles. Okay. Uh, and the treatment is basically uh, there are lasers, there is a treat device called as radio frequency cautery or okay. if there are raised moles they can be uh, surgically removed. Okay. Okay. They can be treated, they don't need to be treated. Sometimes uh, some moles are considered as beauty spots if they come in the right locations. So I mean you would want to keep those. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know some a lot of people have uh, moles which tend to uh, sprout hair and that yeah. doesn't look very good yeah. and so people opt to uh, have them removed. Yeah. The procedure is simple, We, uh, with a minor surgery or a uh, device they can be removed and the area heals within uh, a week to 10 days okay. and uh, a faint scar may form and it will merge with the uh, skin over a period of time okay. so it becomes uh, invisible. So it's a personal preference uh, whether you want to treat a mole or not okay. uh, but they are uh, harmless. So let's talk about raised moles. Um, we want to know that if somebody has a raised mole, say on their nose, maybe in the center of their nose, uh, how can you remove it? Like, is it removable without leaving behind a scar? So, uh, a mole can be treated uh, and of course, when you remove a mole, a faint scar forms. Okay. Uh, but if the mole, typically on the nose, they don't grow very deep because the skin is generally the thickness of the skin is not much. Mm -hmm. So you can remove the uh, mole because obviously a faint scar will look better than a you know mole sitting right on your nose. Yeah. So uh, I mean it's it's good to remove them for cosmetic purposes and the uh, the uh, the wound really heals very quickly. Okay. So it does not form a very unsightly scar and over a period of time uh, the skin grows. And if you do it at a young age, the uh, the whole healing capacity and of the skin is much better. Okay. So a very faint scar may form over a period of time. It almost becomes invisible. Okay. So do you have to follow it up with uh, any kind of laser peels or something for the process, the healing mm. process and the filling mm. process to get yes. Uh, accelerated? Yes. So after the treatment, we of course give some ointments and uh, creams so that the uh, wound can heal quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, once a faint scar is formed, uh, depends on the, the appearance of the scar. So uh, typically scars take three to six months to sort of improve. And then you can treat them with uh, lasers, you can treat them with peels, you can give retinoid creams or vitamin A creams mm -hmm. to improve the overall quality of the uh, skin and the scar. Okay. So yes, uh, multiple treatment options are available. Uh, if uh, the scar that forms is not to your liking. Okay. But uh, generally, uh, after treatment with moles, you don't get very severe scars. If it's done correctly yeah. and it's done, uh, uh, I mean, gently uh, and not too aggressively, it doesn't mm -hmm. form a very uh, prominent scar. Okay. And uh, I know, I know this lady who uh, had a mole here, a raised mole. She got it surgically removed, and I really couldn't tell. The yeah. healing was so good, I really couldn't yeah. tell. 
and the, the other end uh, uh, i have had patients who have applied lime on their uh, you know uh, chuna yeah, yeah. Uh, on their uh, mole and completely burnt a hole in their skin you know yeah. and that uh, i mean that scars for life you can't change it also garlic never ever apply garlic on your moles because it will enlarge your moles and um, a lot of people don't know this that flat moles have the tendency of enlarging especially if you you know try using homeopathy to uh, treat it and i know like i know so many cases i know cases of people who had uh, different issues like they've had muscle pain and they've taken homeopathy treatment uh, which is very common and uh, popular in india and i don't know what these medicines contain because they have suddenly started de developing a whole lot of um, raised moles on their face that started enlarging and becoming more prominent after the homeopathy medicine to treat another ailment which was uh, completely not connected to skin or moles and they have ended up having you know the their entire face full of these moles so i would really suggest that please do not go for medication because i don't think medication can really treat moles right absolutely so there is there are no medications to stop moles or treat moles whether it's a cream or a uh, oral medication right these are uh, i mean you're getting them because you're programmed to get them uh, and they are really harmless if you don't like them you can easily treat them uh, mm -hmm. but definitely if anybody is asking you to take any oral medication or a cream uh, they probably don't know what they're treating and uh, you could it's actually it won't work absolutely yeah no homeopathy please so coming back to flat moles now if somebody has flat moles or uh, say on their nose like say in the center of their nose um, some dermatologists say that when you target it with laser it can split into two mm. and you know not get really treated but it can uh, multiply or mm. you know things can go wrong with the procedure mm. but um, what do you have to say about it so uh I mean, I don't think that's entirely uh, the case. Uh, if you treat it with, uh, we use a device called uh, cautery, uh, you know, radio frequency cautery. We use lasers to treat uh, moles. And like I said, even though the mole appears flat, there is a small portion of it which grows a little deeper, right. and that may be left out. Okay. You know, and that may slowly regrow over a period of time. So you may not get the uh, entire mole back, but a, just a small fraction of it, which can be retreated. you know sometimes if you treat the mole aggressively you may create as a deep scar which we don't want mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of the times we treat it more conservatively and even if the mole grows back you can retreat it but okay. at the same time you will not give a bad scar by treating it aggressively and trying to get rid of it in one uh, session okay but uh, like similar to uh, raised moles will flat moles once they are targeted by laser would they also leave behind a small tiny scar or something like that so usually the scar is very faint again you cannot tell usually flat moles heal very well the only uh, common problem that we see with flat moles is sometimes they grow uh, back and they grow back faintly okay. but you can retreat them you know it's it's always good to treat a little conservatively than go aggressive mm -hmm. because if you treat aggressively it may scar mm -hmm. um, and if you treat uh, conservatively it it may go away without causing a scar okay so flat moles and raised moles are both uh, permanently treatable. treatable and removable yeah. uh, provided you go to the right dermatologist and an experienced one some people have no i don't know if it is a melasma or it's it's something else but they have like moles all over their face now if people have raised moles like plenty of raised moles all over their face is that also uh, like permanently removable so there is a condition called as neurofibromas maybe if you are referring to that where you can have multiple uh, growths all over your face it's a genetically acquired uh, condition mm -hmm. um, and there you can have multiple bumps all over the face uh, mm -hmm. to the point where uh, you know they can grow they can grow large and it can they can be quite disfiguring mm -hmm. um, again you can treat those mm -hmm. there are some conditions called as tuberous sclerosis where you have bumps or you have certain uh, uh, you know uh, acne like bumps coming uh, it's a growth uh, like different type of mole coming out of the hair gland, mm -hmm. hair called as trichoepitheliomas mm -hmm. so you can have multiple kinds of bumps coming up uh, and these are all moles coming out of your sweat glands or your oil glands or mm -hmm. your hair mm -hmm. uh, but they can all be uh, treated 
uh, with a radio frequency or a laser okay. and uh, uh, of course with minimal scarring okay. uh, there's a uh, always a chance that a faint scar may develop but it looks much better than a mole yeah i'm yeah. sure let's talk about freckles uh, although i think freckles is not very common uh, for the indian skin but yes you see a lot of people up north india uh, who have freckles and most uh, commonly uh, you know you have freckles uh, in the red haired people and yes. the western world personally i would say that if you have freckles it doesn't mean that it looks bad sometimes freckles can look really cute you know so if if it's not really you know disturbing and bothering you and i you know you can cover it up with makeup but if you really want to treat it um, is there any permanent solution to freckles or does it keep uh, coming back out of your own genetic condition right. So uh, there are two types of uh, spots that can come on the on an individual's face uh, in a young individual. You have freckles and something called as lenty genes. Mm -hmm. So freckles usually lighten and darken uh, with change in weather, sun exposure. So typically we see that freckles may completely disappear in cold weather and when there's not much sun exposure, and they mm -hmm. will come during the summer when you know when you're exposed to the sun and you know uh, then they will become very prominent. Whereas lentigenes are fixed dots, and they sometimes come as a pattern, or they may be isolated. Mm -hmm. uh, so the lentigenes have to be treated with a laser to remove them. Okay. Whereas freckles do not need to be treated. Uh, you can just simply uh, put on a good sunscreen and maybe use one of those, uh, you know, uh, skin brightening or lightening creams, mm -hmm. and they will work on the uh, freckles. But mm -hmm. sunscreens, typically, if you use it uh, regularly, and you're uh, uh, reasonably uh, good with your sun uh, protection, yeah. uh, freckles lighten naturally. Yeah. Whereas lentigenes don't. Lentigenes yeah. have to be treated with a laser and they can be easily eliminated. Am I right when I say that most of these conditions like freckles and uh, moles especially and melasma, mm -hmm. where, which is like black spots on your face, um, they are, you get more prone to them out of sun exposure? Yes. So any pigmentary condition on the face will darken when it's exposed to the sun. Like yeah. that is the basic uh, thing. With melasma, uh, what happens is uh, melasma comes later on in life. It typically is more common in women, yeah. and uh, it comes in the uh, in the late thirties, yeah. and it builds up. It builds up. It yeah. builds up, and it persists till your seventies. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is something that stays, but with creams with good sun protection like sun protection is the most important part of treatment of any pigmentary condition you have right. to wear a sunscreen every day right. and especially if uh, you have a pigmentary condition you have to wear a tinted sunscreen okay. or a double sunscreen where you uh, layer a bb cream over a sunscreen okay. or use a sunscreen which has a tint okay. because a tinted sunscreen blocks out light more effectively than a transparent sunscreen Okay. So it's very important that we use a tinted uh, uh, sunscreen, mm -hmm. and that has to be worn every day, mm -hmm. and that that helps manage the condition because a lot of these conditions like melasma they don't have a cure. Okay. You have to manage them, okay. and they can be uh, wonderfully managed by you know the uh, usage of right creams mm -hmm. and uh, sunscreens. Okay. And what about those tiny bumps? Like I see a lot of these bikers. Who are prone to having these dark patches on their, you know, upper cheeks, mm -hmm. and also these tiny bumps uh, under their eyes. Right. So, is is all of that treatable? Yes. So, uh, bikers are prone to a lot of sun damage, right. and that's the reason these changes come uh, due to sun damage. So, the pigmentation that you see on the skin is uh, is as a result of uh, months and years of uh, sun damage. The bikers tend to go drive to high altitudes where the uv index is much higher right. and they tend to develop this pigmentation uh, because the skin is trying to protect itself from sun damage absolutely another condition that happens on the under eye area is melia okay melia are collection of dead skin just right under the surface of the skin uh -huh. these skin cells are not shedding out they collect under the skin okay and this is very commonly seen in sun damage so melia are collections of dead skin which are uh, as a result of sun damage, a lot of people get them. Uh, it may run in the family. The, the tendency may run in the family. Okay. But uh, when you uh, refer to bikers and people who are out in the sun, mm -hmm. uh, they may get it because of sun damage, like years and years of uh, sun damage. Okay. Again, they can be easily treated. Okay. Uh, a, a very simple procedure can remove melia, and you can give some creams and sunscreens to prevent any newer ones from forming. Under eyes too. Under eyes too. Okay. 
So guys, uh, please take note that prevention is definitely better than curing it. Since my, I think uh, my teenage days, I've always, if I'm traveling out, walking, if I have to walk somewhere, I always make sure I carry the sun umbrella. I never expose my face directly to the sun and I know that the, uh, the melanin content increases with sun, uh, with UV rays yes. and sun exposure. And a lot of people ignore this fact. Uh, they walk to their office spaces or they're on their bike. They don't cover their face well. So obviously your skin will be prone to these dark spots. So uh, please take care and take these tips and definitely see a good dermatologist uh, because, you know, doing all these home remedies can really do more damage. So hope you like this video. Stay tuned for more updates and more videos coming uh, from Dr. Wilson. Thank you.